Okay guys, quickly before the video starts, I just want to tell you that I'm going to be doing a giveaway at 100 subscribers. Um, there will be more than one winner, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. Thanks for all the support, all the positive comments, all just, yeah, the support and love from you guys has just been awesome. So I want to be doing that. Okay, continue watching the vid. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to my top 5 tips for League of Legends Wild Rift. In this video, I'll be going over all the necessary fundamentals for you to be able to climb out of lower elos such as iron, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum into the higher elos like emerald, diamond, master, grandmaster, and even challenger. As I was making this video, I realized each of these tips are so fundamental to playing the game that they deserve to be made into individual videos by themselves. So. After this video, I will be making other videos on each of these topics specifically and I'll be linking those in the description down below as they come out and also be adding cards on the screen. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And with that, let's get into the video. My first tip for you guys is vision and map awareness. Vision and map awareness go hand in hand in both getting successful kills and ganks while also avoiding dying from ganks or while split pushing. Vision comes from both looking at the minimap and panning around the map. A good rule of thumb for map awareness is what I call the 5 second rule, which means every 5 seconds you should either be panning around the map or looking at the minimap. This is extremely important for every role but especially mid lane and jungle role. These roles should be constantly panning around the map to decide where to roam and to gank. It's critical not just to look at the minimap, but also to pan around the map because you can get information such as enemy health bars, or sometimes you can catch an enemy flashing and you know that they don't have a flash for a little while. It's important to note that the map awareness does not only mean knowing what is on the map, but also means knowing what is going on in the fog of war, such as tracking junglers, or to see where the enemies are ganking. I will also go over this more in depth in a guide specifically on this topic. My second tip for you is proper warding. Warding is strongly linked to map awareness. Correct warding can save you from ganks and help your team know what the enemy is doing and their current position. With proper warding, it becomes really easy to avoid ganks and waste the enemy jungler's time. Proper vision also allows your team to get successful ganks and avoid being counter -ganked. Okay, so some incorrect warding placements that I see pretty often is for mid lane, I see people warding here in the side brushes. These are incorrect wards, they barely allow you to see the jungler. Only when the jungler is about here is when you're gonna see them and if you're pushed up in the lane you're gonna either die or have to burn your flash going all the way back to safety um incorrect wards i see for top lane and bot lane include here 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 these brushes are not going to save you from ganks also if you put your ward too low inside this brush it's a lazy ward and that's also not going to save you from ganks where i recommend warding is up here in the top of this brush Wait, here, let me make it take yellow. Um, so where I recommend warding for mid lane is going to be here, here, which is going to allow you enough, more than enough time to spot ganks from the enemy jungler or in the pixel brush if you think they're going to come from the river. Next, for top lane and bot lane, I recommend warding here. Um, for both top lane and bot lane, for top lane, you want to ward in this tri brush. And for bot lane, you want to ward in enemy tri brush or farther up in the river. Um, to avoid getting ganked from the jungler. Okay, that's basically the basic ward spots, but I will go into more advanced ward warding spots for the mid to late game. And if you play jungler, I'll also be going more in depth for you. My third tip for you is proper team fighting and split pushing. It's crucial to note whether to group with your team or to split push in the side lanes. In lower elo like silver, gold, and plat, I often see most people just going down in the mid lane without thinking and regardless of the champion in the mid to late game. However, if you are assassin or a split pusher such as Fiora, you should be most likely side laning, especially if there's a minion wave that you can collect. 
Split pushing puts pressure on the enemy team and causes them to panic or to draw members of the enemy team, allowing your team to have a numbers advantage on the enemy if a team fight breaks out. I'll be going over this in my guide and I'll also be going over how to team fight properly and team fight positioning for every single type of champion and role. My fourth tip for you is to properly itemize. People control right at the start of the game by picking incorrect runes or items. The items for your champion is extremely important in League of Legends Wild Earth. I often see people building the exact same item in the exact same order every single game. And this is very inefficient and not how the game was meant to be played. Some general guidelines you want to follow is building armor against AD or attack damage and MR against AP or ability power. Also, building Zhanyas against assassins such as Zed or Fizz is really good. However, don't build this item every game as the Quicksilver Sash is much better against comps with heavy CC. My guide for itemization has already come out, so if you want to check that out, it's in the description and there should be a card on the screen. I go over itemization in depth for every role and how to build your champion optimally. My last tip and probably the most important tip in this video is proper wave management. The way I got out of low elo so quickly is correct wave management. Most people in low elo, which is iron to platinum, just shove the lane as fast as they can and just push the wave with all their abilities. This is completely wrong and just extremely troll. There are three different strategies that come with proper wave management. The first one is slow pushing, which means you stack up your minion wave as much as possible um, and make a big crash on the enemy turret. The next is fast pushing, which is shoving the wave as fast as you can. And the last one called freezing, which I never saw when I was in lower elos, is freezing. Freezing is stopping the wave in front of your tower and not pushing the wave into the enemy tower. This is really useful for denying your opponent XP and gold. I will be going over these three strategies in my wave management guide and exactly when you want to use these strategies, the pros and cons of each one. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. Okay, thank you so much for watching the video. This was my top five tips for climbing in League of Legends Wild Rift. As I said, all of these topics will be covered in separate videos. I will be linking a playlist down below. Um, to all these videos after I'm done making them. I want to thank you for watching this far into the video And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe It would really make my day um, Also comment down below if there are any other topics that you want me to cover that were not mentioned in this guide I know there's a lot more like fundamentals in League of Legends Wild Rift But these are the, the ones I feel that are most important and the ones that I don't see people doing very often in low elo. But if you have other topics that you want me to cover and make a guide for, do not hesitate to leave it in the comments down below and I will try to put that out for you. Thanks again for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!